Hey guys, welcome back to the Holder Heck channel. So this is the long-awaited return to the Defy Expectations series. Um, as before, this is going to be a guide to cheesing the most DPS out of every single boss fight in the current raid tier. I just want to say I'm sorry for this coming out so incredibly late. My server, um, as I have said a few times, was rather slow in opening up a queue. And my additional excuse, as you know, is I moved across the country in the period in which that happened. So my particular um, bullshit out of the way, we're going to get right into it and teach you how to get 99s or hopefully at least 95s on every single one of these boss fights. Let's do it. With the Prophet Scarum, the main thing you have to worry about is, in fact, doing damage too quickly. And I'm not saying hold back, because that's not the point of this guide. But what I'm saying is, we do so much damage with full world buffs and full consumes, that the Prophet tends to phase his uh, phases incredibly quickly. So what that means is, you are going to have to cleave as much as humanly possible or orcishly possible. So what does that mean for you, Enhancement Shaman, who is likely watching this? That means you need to fire Nova Totem, you need to sapper. If you are one of the blessed boys who are 3120, that means during one of the splits, you need to Elemental Mastery Chain Lightning. And now I know what you're saying, Holder. Cleaves on this fight are what get people killed because people who are mind controlled hit for like 300% increased damage when the sheep gets broke. Now, true, because that happened to me and I died losing all world buffs on this fight. What you need to do is have your mages draw straws to see who is going to be the person who is just spamming sheep the entire fight. And I don't care what mage that is, perhaps you still have a Winter's Chill mage. Perhaps you have a mage that parses green. Maybe it should be that guy. In any case, there should be one to two mages who just spam sheep on this fight. And then you can cleave to your heart's desire and Scarum will die in under 40 seconds and you will get the cherished 99. Highly recommended things you should use or pre-pop on this fight Greater Arcane Protection Potion, potentially Greater Nature Protection Potion for the Triple Arcane Explosion and Earth Shocks. Otherwise, always have a lip on the ready in case someone gets mind controlled near you or in case you break a mind control and that big angry boy looks at you for half a second. With our good friends, the Bug Trio, the main thing that needs to be reiterated, as with all council fights, is to maximize your DPS. You have to keep them together, and you have to AoE them down as much as possible. So that's Sappers, that's Fire Nova Totem, that's Magma Totem. That's going to be the main thing you can do as a Shaman to get the most damage out of this fight. Additionally, you can maximize your DPS a little bit better by, you know, doing simple things by not standing in Lord Kree's poison and not getting feared over and over again by Vem, which is probably the single thing that will lower your DPS the most on this fight. Don't worry about timing any AoE with Princess Yaj dying as she summons adds, but those adds don't count towards your DPS. Main things to remember, AoE down the bosses, not the adds, don't get feared, keep your time on target up, and you will pump. Quick shout out here to the Ravager as being the most slept on item in Classic WoW. These red bugs here that do the knock away and potentially knock you, you know, 75,000 feet into the air to landing into your death. If you are Ravager spinning on these packs, not only will you do a pretty decent amount of AoE damage, as you can see here, but while the Ravager is spinning, you will not be knocked away. It is 
Hyper Bis, and I recommend it on these pulls, as well as potentially greater stone shield potions. Ah, uh, with Sartura, yes. So, this fight, as all council fights, as we were just talking about with the Bug Trio, the name of the game to maximize your DPS is AoE. Fire Nova Totem, Magma Totem, Sapper Charge. You achieve that on this fight by having a warrior go in, AoE taunt, and then lip. They will stay on the warrior even though he has lipped, and that's going to give you and the mages and everybody else with sappers time to burst down these adds, cleave them down, do anything you possibly can to kill them as fast as possible. Now, you can pre-pop a greater stone shield potion to eat the whirlwinds that you may or may not take. You can also have a limited invulnerability potion to pop if you're getting whirlwinded by Battleguard Sartura, but those two potions are probably going to be your go-to on this fight. Either Lip or Stone Shield, or if you can potentially time them correctly, uh, both. But that's going to be a little tricky. Either way, the main thing is AoE down those adds, and then try to stay in on Sartura as long as physically possible. You might be able to eat a tick or two of her regular Whirlwind, especially with a Stone Shield potion, but her Berserk Whirlwind will absolutely shred you as somebody who's wearing leather and mail, so either lip or get the hell out. Fancris the Unyielding is the single target DPS dick measuring contest boss of AQ. This is the fight you can go the hardest on. This is the fight that you are measured against all other DPS, essentially. There are some adds, and it may or may not be your job to deal with them, but I wouldn't really worry about it, and I would just beat on the boss. You're going to be killing Fancris so quickly that the one giant worm that spawns that's an actual threat can be handled by uh, other people. If you want to do a fire nova totem or a magma totem to deal with the bug adds and the potential worm adds, that's great. A sapper works great here too. But you know what works even better here? Watching my imbue weaving video to maximize your single target DPS. With Princess Huharan, there's a couple different ways to kill this boss. The first way, the way I recommend, is no nature resistance gear, blowing all cooldowns, all warriors, blowing recklessness, and killing her in 30 to 40 seconds. Some people may even kill her faster than that. But the point is, you kill this boss so incredibly fast that she doesn't have time to damage the raid. That's an optimal way to play. You're still gonna wanna keep down Nature Resistance Totem and possibly weave that with Wind Fury Totem. You're going to probably have a lot of health so you can get the sleep dispelled and not worry about dying. But the key is just hit her so hard and so fast that she doesn't have time to squirt her spurts and kill everybody. Now, if you don't have 10 plus warriors blowing recklessness, and you don't have a lot of massive, throbbing, veiny DPS, you're going to have to rely on a nature resistance wall, so obviously somewhere around 150, 160 unbuffed nature resistance on the wall plus the totem, it'll be enough to soak the damage so your ranged can then kill the boss. I don't recommend that way because that way makes you do less damage and that is sub-optimal. Everybody blow wreck. Blow your trinkets, blow blood fury, who cares? Get dispelled, kill Huharan, make her regret the day she was spawned. Ah uh, yes, the Twin Emperors, the most interesting fight in all of AQ. The main thing you have to concern yourself on this fight is simply aggro management, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal, especially with the amount of travel time you have in between the bosses. The other issue you're going to have here is mana expenditure, as you have to recast totems every time you run back and forth. If you're trying to save mana, I recommend just dropping Wind Fury every time you get to a boss 
that will make it far easier for you to do the fantastic, best, awesome toolkit shaman technology in the game imbue weaving so you can then get your rock biter weapon and wind fury weapon on the boss every single time you hit him. As before, check out that video. It greatly helps this fight. And in fact, this fight alone is probably the single best use of imbue weaving in the entire game. So, you could also potentially use fire protection potions if you haphazardly run into an exploding bug, but the main thing on this fight is keep your mana consumes up, redrop totems every time you run back and forth, and hit those delicious imbue weaves, and you too will be parsing at the very least above a 95 on the twin imps, if if your mages don't pull aggro and wipe the raid, which, you know, it, it happens sometimes. Oops. For Oro, or as we lovingly refer to him, Uwuwu, there's really only one strategy. Yes, there are multiple strategies. There's a warlock strategy. There's a, there's a mage tank strategy. There's a every single melee is the off tank strategy. But I'm going to give you guys the actual strategy. After much, much trial and error on this boss fight, I can tell you this is the one way to do it. As a melee DPS, you're going to pre-pop a Greater Nature Protection Potion. And on the second Sandblast, you're going to have a free action potion ready to use. You are going to eat that second Sandblast. As you run in to eat the Sandblast, make sure you already have a free action potion ready to go. And before you get hit by it, blow the free action potion. You are now dropped completely off the threat table, and you are not spinning, and you are currently winning. That's all you have to do. At that point, just treat him like a gigantic worm-shaped target dummy and have a great time. This is the one true and only strategy that I have found works in any way whatsoever on this ridiculous boss. Have fun. I didn't, but I will now. We are finally on the last boss of AQ, Seathun, as we used to call him back in vanilla, but as we all know now, is Cthun, or as he goes in his social circles, Carl Thun, uh, is a mechanic heavy fight, and given the history of these DPS cheesing videos that I like to make, we're not gonna really go into the mechanics. You should already know the mechanics if you're trying to maximize your damage on a fight, but that being said, just understand that there are various points in this fight where you are going to be responsible for not killing the entire raid, and keeping people from being mind flayed, and keeping yourself from dying to stomach acid, and keeping yourself from tanking large claw tentacles that you should not be tanking. All of that being said, maximizing damage on old Carl here comes down to blowing your load as much as you possibly can in phase one. There's no aggro on this fight, so you're gonna wanna put as much damage as hard and fast as you can into that eyeball as quickly as possible. And then by the time people, perhaps yourself, end his two internal claw tentacles and create the vulnerability phase, you yourself will then have your cooldowns back off of cooldown to then blow even more DPS hard and fast into his weakened, blinking, tentacled body. That's really it. Sappers, Fire Nova Totem, all of your mana consumes, your racial damage bonuses, potentially trinkets, Try to use them all in phase one, and then by the time you get to phase two, most, if not all of them, should be off of cooldown so you can use them again. If you go into a three phase where you have to have two vulnerabilities, um, your DPS isn't going to be very high because obviously you're spending a lot of time standing around waiting to interrupt eyeballs, but you can maybe eke out a little bit more damage by making sure you're fighting the large claw tentacles, but the key here is one phase the guy, kill the eyeball, kill him in the first vulnerability, and then you're gonna be doing the massive, massive deeps. And that, my friends, is it for the Defy Expectations Guide for AQ40. It's only like two months late, 
that's okay. What is two months in the grand scheme of the never-ending loop, never-ending circle, never-ending abyss? That is time. Anyway, I'm sorry it took so long, I really am. But, you know, here's the video. Enjoy. Uh, you know, I stream AQ so you can watch me do this stuff. Most of this footage, I'm pretty sure all of this footage, came from one of my streams anyway. So perhaps you were there when it all got recorded. Check out the rest of my videos. They all apply to everything all the time. Make sure you watch them in loop 24 hours a day on multiple different devices. That really helps me out a lot. Uh, again, check me out on Twitch, The Holder Heck. Subscribe here if you want to be a super cool bro. And until the next video, guys, uh, stay frosty or some other catchphrase. Bye bye. <laughs>